Aussie Animals Part 6 The Eastern Brown Snake, also known as the Common Brown, is known as Australia's deadliest snake. Some of you may argue the inland Taipan is the deadliest, however that's a yes-no situation. If we're talking venom alone, then the inland clearly wins, being twice as powerful as the Eastern Brown's venom. But if we're talking number of people who have died in Australia to one particular snake, then the Eastern Brown is the winner, with more than 60% of snake bite deaths in Australia being contributed to this snake. However, one thing that should be noted with these snakes, all venomous snakes in Australia I should say, is that they aren't as deadly as you may think. I remember coming across a video answering the question of Eastern Brown versus Black Mamba, and they claimed that the Eastern Brown is super aggressive and never backs down. Once they coil the part of the body that is on the ground into an S-shape, they intend to strike, and will not back down until they kill their foe or it retreats. However, a couple times they use this video for background footage, where they show the snake rapidly approaching the man filming. This clip is taken out of context. What actually was happening was the man was showing off the Eastern Brown's defensive behaviour and how it is mistaken for aggression. I'll make sure to link the video in the description for your own viewing pleasure. Basically, he cuts it off from escaping a couple times to demonstrate how it'll avoid a fight if it can, and it coils into an S shape when it's trying to tell him to back off a bit. It only really charges at him when it thinks there's no other way of getting past him. Snakes will avoid humans whenever possible. According to one snake book my father has, roughly 80 to 90% of people in Australia who are bitten or killed by snakes are attempting to kill the snake or capture it. Someone at a job I've been working at recently told me that snakes will typically avoid using venom on humans also. The reason why is because venom takes considerable effort for their body to produce, meaning it must be used sparingly, or in other words, only for prey. Unless they are generally in a situation where they have to use it, they aren't going to waste their venom. Anyway, getting back to the snake itself, the current average length is about 1.5 meters, and the largest on record according to the Australian Museum's website was about 2 meters. However, the Billabong Sanctuary's website says they can reach a massive 2.4 meters, making them similar in length to King Browns or Mulga snakes. Also, just as an interesting note, Eastern Browns are actually immune to King Brown Venom, meaning that's one less predator of Eastern Browns. Now they only got to worry about birds, goannas, and drunken yobos armed with frosted shovels. When it comes to the potency of its venom, Eastern Browns are currently the second most venomous land snake in the world, needing roughly 0.053 milligrams per kilogram to kill a person. As a comparison, the fourth most venomous snake in the world, the coastal Taipan, needs 0.106 or 0.099 milligrams per kilogram. Actually, funny story, when I first told my dad that the Eastern Brown is the second most venomous snake, he didn't really believe me at first, since he was raised thinking they weren't that potent of a snake, but when I explained it a little further, all he said was, huh, fuck. That was the one we threw at each other as kids. This is Australia. It's no wonder people think Australians are weird. As mentioned earlier, Eastern Browns live in Queensland, New South Wales and Victoria, and also extend into South Australia and the Northern Territory. There's also been Eastern Browns found in Papua New Guinea, with the original belief being that they were introduced to the area. However, genetic analysis has found they actually migrated from far north Queensland to Papua New Guinea via a land bridge. Currently, these snakes are listed as being least concern on the endangered species list. Unlike some other animals, eastern browns have actually benefited from human expansion, since it means more mice and rats for them to feast on, which is another reason why humans are more likely to encounter them than other snakes. This has also led to it being known also as the common brown, however I prefer to just call it the eastern brown. From what I could find online, 
breeding is typically in late spring when they come out of hibernation and females can lay up to 40 or 60 eggs though most only lay about 15 or 16 eggs. According to the Adelaide Snake Catchers website, females lay their eggs in damp conditions and leave them to fend for themselves. However, I came across something else saying they'll stay with them for about 5 weeks before moving on, possibly doing this to defend them from predators. Alongside this, in captivity they are known to coil around their eggs for several hours, which is believed to be, as the museum put it, a low level of maternal care. However, as they state just after saying that, it could also be them recovering from the exertions of labour. The time it takes for them to hatch varies a lot depending on the temperature, from as low as 36 days to as many as 95. When they hatch, they are about 270 millimeters long and have to fend for themselves. So that was the Eastern Brown, and a quick lecture about how dangerous Australian snakes really are and the difference between venomous and deadliness. I hope that with this video I not only taught you about an Australian animal, but also educated you about certain things about snakes as a whole when talking about them being dangerous to humans. Anyway, I'll see you next time I upload.